Hi there and welcome to another video from Hegarty Maths. It's Mr Hegarty here and we're continuing our differentiation for Maths A level and we're talking about related rates of change. In this video I'd like us to be able to use the chain rule to work out the rate of change of one variable if we know the rate of change of another related variable. And I'm going to explain what I mean by this by way of, uh, of an example. Suppose I had a piece of paper. All right. Suppose I had a piece of paper um, here. And on that piece of paper, I put a dot in the middle of the paper. Uh, so the paper was like tissue paper, as it were, and I put a, a, an ink dot in the middle there, like that, of red. Now, suppose that ink dot spread out like a um, circle. So as it spread out, it spread out like a circle. Like that, okay? So, it was spreading out over time as follows. It was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger like that, all from the center like this. Now, suppose I knew the following. I knew over time how quickly the radius dr by dt was changing, the rate at which the radius was increasing. So the radius going from there to like here, a step bigger, I knew how big, how much that was increasing, okay, over time. I knew the speed at which that was increasing. Okay, I knew the speed at which the radius was increasing. What, and say that was like, I don't know, five centimeters per second, five centimeters per second, per second. What if someone asked me, how quickly is the area of the ink increasing, dA by dt? If someone asked me this, I might want to know how much, uh, how much the area of this circle is increasing over time. Now, if I know the radius, uh, how fast that's increasing, and I know some formula that connects the area of the circle and the radius of, of the circle, then I would be able to work out the um, rate at which the area of the ink is increasing over time. And that's the type of problems we want to solve. Given we know how the rate of one variable changes over time, we'd like to work out how, the, uh, how a different variable changes over time as long as we've got something connecting A uh, with R in this case. We've got something connecting these two variables. We should be able to work out the, what's called the related rate of change of a different variable if we know um, how another related variable changes over time. Okay, so that's what we're trying to do. And let's do two examples to show you straight away. What we're going to do is we're going to use the chain rule. Okay. Um, example. So the first example is exactly like I told you about. It's um, we have a circle uh, with a centimeter squared related to its radius r from the formula a is equal to pi r squared. So we know that the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. And we also know the following. We are given the following. The rate of change of its radius is dr by dt is equal to 5. So we know the following. dr by dt is equal to 5 um, centimeters uh, per second. And we would like to find, we would like to find dA by dt when r is equal to 3. Okay, so... What we would like to find, we would like to find dA by dt. So let's write dA by dt is equal to. Now by the chain rule, I want dA on the top. Now, what do we know? We know dr by dt. Um, so we can multiply this by dr by dt. And what we can work out is dA by dr. Now where did that come from? Why did I think of that? Well, the dA by dr... Uh, the dr on the denominator here and the dr by dt, you can think of them as cancelling. This is like the chain rule. So dA by dt, I want dA by dt, so I work out dA by dr because I've got a formula with a and r in it. And I know dr by dt, it's 5. And I can use these two and multiply them together to get dA by dt. So given that a is equal to pi r squared, dA by dr, differentiating this with respect to r, would be equal to, uh, r is our variable here, 
I would say that's 2 pi r to the power of 1, or just 2 pi r. So therefore, dA by dt would be equal to 2 pi r multiplied by dr by dt, which we said was 5. So multiplied by 5, so dA by dt is equal to 10 pi r. Now the question asks us, what is it when r is equal to 3? So I'm going to substitute 3 in here. So dA by dt, when r is equal to 3, is going to be equal to 30 pi. And we're done. So what was the big idea here? The big idea was we want to find this out. So we want dA by dt. So I know I'm going to need a dA on top. I've got a formula relating a and r, so I can certainly work out dA by dr, so that would be a sensible thing to work out, and I'm given dr by dt. So if I had to multiply this by dr by dt, the drs kind of cancel, and I get my dA by dt that I want. So that was the idea here. Let's apply the same thing in example two. Let's see if we can use a similar idea. The volume of a hemisphere, V, is related to its radius given by the formula. So we have V is equal to 2 thirds pi r cubed. Now, straight away, when we've written that down, why not just work out for the sake of it dv by dr? It may be useful later. So, because we've got a formula v the subject in terms of r, r the variable, let's differentiate with respect to r, and we would get 2 pi r squared. Okay, that may be helpful later. So these two could be two helpful pieces of information. And the total surface area is given by this formula here, pi r squared plus 2 uh, pi r squared. So the surface area is given by 3 pi r squared. So we've got the surface area in terms of r. So while we're here, let's work out ds by dr, which would be equal to 6 pi r. Again, these two formulae may be useful later. So these two formulae I was given and I just differentiated them with respect to the variable that was in each formula because that might be useful when using the chain rule. Now what else do we have? We are given that the rate of increase in volume dv by dt is 6. So we are given that dv by dt is equal to 6 and we are asked to find the rate of increase of the surface area ds by dt. So we want to find ds by dt. Okay, so I'm going to actually go along here. So let's think ds by dt. That's what we want. So I'm going to want a ds on the top. Okay, and so, um, and I'm also going to want a dt on the bottom somewhere. Okay, so I'm going to want a ds on the top and I'm going to want a dt on the bottom somewhere. Now, what have I got? I've got dv by dr, and I've got ds by dr. So, given I've got ds here, I'm going to have to write down ds by dr. It's the only thing with s's and r's in it, so I'm going to use this here. Then, I'm going to, I want to get rid of this um, dr, as it were. There's no dr on this side. So, I'm going to multiply that by dr there to get rid of the dr, and the only thing I've got with dr's in it is uh, d, dr by dv. This is 1 over this. So I can multiply this by dr by dv, which is just 1 over dv by dr. Now, this gives me so far ds by dv. I don't want ds by dv. I want ds by dt. So I'm going to want a dt on the bottom here, and I have been given dv by dt. So that dv here would end up cancelling. So let's think how this works. That dr sort of cancels with that dr. That dv cancels with that dv, and you're left with ds by dt. And why is this useful? Well, I, I know that. I've got it 1 over this thing here. I know that. Um, sorry, it's 1 over this thing here. This here, ds by dr, I'm given it. It's this. And lastly, dv by dt, I'm given it. It's 6. So ds by dt is going to equal ds by dr, which is 6 pi r, so 6 pi r multiplied by dr by dv, which is 1 over this thing here, so it's 1 over 2 pi r squared, multiplied by dv by dt, which is 6. So ds by dt then is going to be, well, that pi will cancel with that pi, one of those r's will cancel with one of those r's, and that 2 will cancel with that to be a 3. So what we're going to get, we're going to have a 3 over r multiplied by 6, 
i.e. we're going to have ds by dt is equal to 18 over r. Okay, and it said find the rate of increase of the surface area ds by dt and we have found that ds by dt is 18 over r and we're done. So again, this was a very similar thing. We, we have to just identify the formulas we're given and differentiate them, look at what we're trying to find and just be a bit clever about how we apply the various things we've got in order to get the right um, fraction, as it were, on the differential. And that's it for, for this uh, here. Make sure you do um, this extra work to consolidate your learning. Thanks for watching.